Are you getting started in computer networking or maybe you're studying for a CCNA and you need to figure out IP subnetting because it is the foundation of any career in computer networking. Watch this video and I'm going to explain it all for you so that way you'll be able to practice on your own. And if you stick around until the end of this video, I will even give you a tool to help you practice and master IP subnetting. Hi, my name is Rich and welcome to the Rich Tech Guy channel. IP addresses and subnetting. There is a lot to go over in this video. So I recommend that you save this into a uh, playlist so that way you can come back to it for future reference. I will also have it marked off in chapters so if you want to go to a particular section you're welcome to do that too. Okay, now before I get into this let's first uh, hit that like button and uh, if you want more of this content, go ahead and hit the subscribe button too if you're not already subscribed to this channel. So without much further ado, let's get into IP addresses and subnetting. All right, let's start at the beginning. You have a computer and you need to connect your computer to the internet so you can go on to YouTube and check out some cool videos like this one, right? So to connect to the internet, your computer needs three pieces of information. It needs, first of all, an IP address, then a subnet mask, and the third piece is a default gateway. Now, once your computer is connected to the internet, you need some other information as well, like a DNS IP, but that's a topic for another video. For the purposes of this, let's look into what is an IP address. So an IP address, or for this video, an IPv4 or an IP version 4 address is a 32-bit logical address that identifies your computer on the network. All right. Now, by logical, I mean that your computer can change its IP. It is not hard fixed to the computer. So. If you change networks, your computer will change IP addresses. Your computer can even hold multiple IP addresses if, say, you're connected to multiple networks simultaneously. And also, if you're, you can even go in and change your IP address if your computer, even on the same network, just not recommended unless you know the IP addressing the subnets and which IPs are already taken on that current network. Okay, so when we look at an IP address, it is typically represented as four numbers that range from 0 to 255, and each of those numbers are separated by a dot or a decimal. This is referred to as dotted decimal notation, and its sole purpose is to make IP addresses easier for us humans to read. Your computer is going to look at it very differently because each one of those numbers from 0 to 255 is actually a sequence of 8 bits. And we refer to those 8 bits as an octet. Octet meaning a group of 8. And then each bit is a 1 or a 0. Okay? So how many IP addresses are there? Well, from a mathematical standpoint, we're looking at 2 to the power of 32. So a, the IP address is binary, we're going to have a 1 or a 0, so there's two possible options, 32 bits, so we're going to raise it to the power of 32. And from a mathematical standpoint, that is going to look like 4.3 billion IP addresses. Now I say billion in the American English term of that, so that might be different depending on where in the world you're from, but think of it as 4.3 with a whole lot of zeros, all right? Now this is in theory and from a mathematical standpoint. The reality of it is you have uh, far fewer IP addresses available, or we in general. We have far fewer IP addresses in general. And the reason for that is, first of all, there are IP classes, okay? There are five IP classes, and they are class A, which is 0 to 127. Keep in mind, though, that 0 is not used uh, except for DHCP requests. Class B IP addresses 
is going to be uh, 128 to 191. On class C IP addresses, the first octet is going to range from 192 to 223. And on class D, it is going to go from 224 to 239. And for class E IP addresses, the first octet will range from 240 to 255. Okay, so why were these IP addresses organized based off of these numbers, all right? Well, when we're looking at the first octet of the IP address in its binary form, a class A IP address is going to start with the uh, value of zero as the first bit. A class B address, the first two bits are going to be one zero. For a class C IP address, the first two bit or first three bits really are going to be one one zero. For a class D IP address, the first three bits, or actually four bits, are going to be one, 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 zero. And a class E IP address, the first four bits are going to be one, 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 one. All right, we're gonna look at IP addresses from a binary form later in this video, because understanding binary is the key to subnetting IP addresses. Uh, also, the other thing I'm going to mention is this is the last time really that we're going to uh, talk about class E IP addresses. Because when we're talking about unicast IP addresses, which is an IP address going from a single point of origin to a single destination, what we're really looking at is three classes. Okay, we have class A, class B, and class C. All right. Class D IP addresses are reserved for multicast traffic, which is going to be from a single point of origin to multiple destination points. And then class E IP addresses are for research and experimental purposes only and not used in networking for any general purpose that you would likely use it for in a career in IT. So we can forget about class E at this point. Now, each of the three unicast classes, class A, B, and C, have a standard size subnet. So this is what is known as the, the subnet for that class, or a classful subnet. And uh, for a class A IP address, the total number of addresses in its standard subnet is going to be 16,777,250 or approximately 16.8 million addresses. A class B IP address is going to have the total number of addresses in its standard subnet at 65,536. And the standard subnet for a class C IP address is going to have a total number of 256 IP addresses. All right, well, how are these numbers determined? Well, in order to figure that out, that's where we have to go to the second part of the subnet mask, uh, of the IP address, which is the subnet mask. A subnet mask tells your computer what other addresses are on the same network that it is on. So how does it do that? We're going to look at IP addresses from a binary form later in this video because understanding binary is the key to subnetting IP addresses. Welcome to the world of binary. Now, when we're working with IP addressing and subnet mass, we have to understand binary because that is the most basic form of data for a computer, which is a bit. So a bit is represented by either a zero, the bit is not active, or a one, the bit is active. Okay, so as your computer is trying to send data across a wire, it's going to be sending it one bit at a time at a very fast rate of speed. But it's going to check at regular clock intervals uh, to either transmit the data or, or if it's receiving data, it's going to look at it at regular clock intervals. So at the, when that clock interval hits, if 
there is a certain amount of voltage on the wire, it will recognize that as a one bit. If there is not enough voltage on the wire, it will recognize that as a zero bit. So that is how your computer is effectively transmitting the data. Now, since IPv4 addresses and their equivalent subnet mass are 32 bits and are broken up into four groups of eight bits, referred to as octets that earlier said in the video, we are going to only be working with eight bit binary numbers. Now, the thing to remember about binary is we are really just working with powers of two. Another way to look at that is doubling. But when we're looking at a string of binary numbers, we are going to start with two to the power of zero. Because when you're counting with computers, computers always start counting on zero. Okay, so right here, we have a binary number that is all ones. And the reason why we're doing all ones first is so that way we can show all of the powers of two. Now, starting from the very far to the right, in what would be, say, the ones column on a regular decimal number, we're going to have two to the power of zero, which equals one. And then we have two to the power of one, which is two. Two to the power of two, four. We have two to the power of three, which is eight. Two to the power of four, 16. Two to the power of five, 32. 2 to the power of 6, which is 64, and 2 to the power of 7, which is 128. By adding the numbers for each digit that is represented by a 1, we can get the equivalent decimal number. In the case where all of the 8 bits are 1, as we're looking at here, the resulting decimal number is 255. Now let's look at another example. So in this example, we have one, one, zero, zero, one, zero, one, one. So what we are going to do is we are only going to look at the digits that are ones. That is what we're going to add up. Okay, so starting on the rightmost side, we have two to the power of zero, which is one. The next digit with a one is two to the power of one, which is two. Okay. The next digit is a zero, so we're going to skip over that and we're going to go to two to the power of three, which is eight. And then we have two more digits that are zeros, so let's skip over them. And we are going to have two to the power of six, which is 64, and two to the power of seven, which is 128. If we add all of these numbers up together, this binary number represents the decimal number 203. So let's take a look at one more example before moving on. Okay, this time we have zero, zero, one, zero, one, zero, one, zero. Okay, so this time we're just gonna look at the equivalent values instead of the two to the power. Uh, but basically those values are going to work out to 32 plus eight plus two, which when we add all of this up, we get the binary number that represents the answer to life, the universe, and everything, also known as 42. Okay, so now that we have binary figured out, go ahead and hit that like button if you haven't done so already. And uh, if you're not subscribed to this channel, what are you waiting for? Hit the subscribe button as well. Okay, with that aside, let's get into figuring out how we can utilize binary and our understanding of it with a subnet mask and IP subnetting. So, a subnet mask it can be represented in one of two different ways. And what it does is it splits the IP address into two sections, a network section and a host section. Okay, and the, way, the first way to look at a subnet mask is the same way we look at an IP address with the four numbers between 0 and 255 separated by dots or, dots, uh, or decimals, uh, the dotted decimal notation. But when we're looking at a subnet mask in dotted decimal notation, we notice something different from the IP addresses. Whereas the IP address, every octet could be represented by 256 different values, sort of. Uh, 
The subnet mask can really only have nine values in an octet. And those values are 0, 128, 192, 224, 240, 248, 252, 254, and 255. The other thing about a subnet mask is that we're going to notice that only one octet can be a value other than 0 or 255. So the way a subnet mask splits the IP address into a host portion is that a, a subnet mask is going to be a sequence of ones followed by a sequence of zeros. The network portion of the IP address is represented by the sequence of ones, and the host portion of the IP address is represented by the sequence of zeros. So there's a line of demarcation on that subnet mask, and everything to one side of it is ones, to the other side is going to be zeros. So this is why subnet masks will be either uh, just octets of 255 and zero, so like a 255, 255, zero, zero, or you can have 255, zero, 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 in the case of a class A uh, subnet mask, or you can have 255, 255, 255, zero, or uh, the other way a subnet mask will be is you will have 255s, and then you will have a number of one of the, the other seven values of a subnet mask, and then zeros after that. So say 255, 255, 240, zero. Or it would be 255, 254, zero, zero. Okay. So let's take a look at some examples. Now we're gonna look at this example of 172.16.15.25 with a subnet mask of 255.255.0.0. Now, if we convert that into binary, we are going to get this sequence of numbers for the IP address. And for the subnet mask, we are going to have the first two octets are going to be all ones, and the last two octets are going to be all zeros. Every bit on that IP address that is paired up with a one on the subnet mask is going to be the network portion of the address, and every bit paired up with a zero is going to be the host portion. Now let's say we have the same IP address, but the amount of devices on the network or hosts is smaller. So we're going to reduce the host portion by four bits. And now what we have is the first two octets of the subnet mask are going to be all ones. The third octet is going to have four ones to represent those four bits where we reduced the host portion by. And then after that, it's going to be all zeros. If we convert that back into uh, the dotted decimal notation, we'll notice that the subnet mask is going to be 255.255.240.0. This has reduced the number of available IPs on the network, and I'll talk about how to calculate the number of usable IP addresses very soon. But first, let's take a look at it from the perspective of a computer. So you have a computer on the IP address 172.16.15.25 and it wants to send a packet to another computer at 172.16.17.3. It's going to look at the subnet mask and determine if the IP address is on the same network by verifying if the bits in the network portion are the same as its own network bits. So with a subnet mask of 255.255.0.0, it would look like this. Now, as we can see with that 255.255.0.0 subnet mask, the network portion matches. The computer determines that the destination computer is on the same network, and because of this, the computer knows that it just needs to put the destination IP address on the packet and send it on its way. In reality, there are some other actions going on, things like an ARP request, but again, topic for another video. But now, let's have the computer send a packet to the same IP address, 
but we'll change the subnet mask to 255.255.240.0. Okay, this is what we look at, we see as we're looking at it this way. And now we notice that there is a difference in the network portion of the IP address. The last bit of that network portion has changed or is different. It is a zero or a one, uh, a zero on the source address and a one on the destination address. Okay, so this time when we're looking at the network portion of IP addresses, the computer knows that the destination that is trying to send that packet to is not on the same network that it's on. So what it needs to do instead is send that uh, packet to a gateway IP address that will then transfer or route the packet to another network. And the device at the gateway IP address is also referred to as a default gateway. And there we have the third portion of the uh, information that your computer needs in order to connect to the internet. So we have now seen that the more ones that get added to a subnet mask, the larger the network portion of the IP address. But ironically, we're actually gonna then be working with a smaller sized network because we're going to have fewer bits in the IP address available for the host portion of the IP address. All right, so, and then it also works in reverse. The smaller the number of ones, the smaller the network portion, but the more available IP addresses we have on the network because more host bits are available. So how do we calculate the number of available IPs in a subnet mask? All right, what we need to do is we have to look at the number of zeros in the subnet mask and raise two to the power of that number. So for a simple one here of a subnet mask of 255.255.0.0, in binary, it is going to look like this. And what we're going to have is we have the first octet is all ones, the second octet is all ones, the third octet is going to be all zeros, and the fourth octet is going to be all zeros. So this means that we have two octets of all zeros, each octet is eight bits, we have 16 zeros. All right, so in order to calculate, this is where we're going to need to raise two to the power of that number. This is where having a calculator can come in handy. So what we're going to do is two to the power of 16 and that we get 65,536. So 65,536 in the subnet mass 255.255.0.0, that's the number of available IPs, right? Not quite. There's one more step involved. In every subnet, two IPs get reserved for the network and the broadcast. The network IP is the first IP address in the subnet mask, and the broadcast IP is the last IP address in the subnet mask. So in order to get the number of available IP addresses in a given subnet mask, we are going to need to take two to the power of the number of zeros in the subnet mask, and then subtract two. So for a subnet mask of 255.255.0.0, we are going to raise that to the power of 16, and then we are going to subtract two, and that gives us 65,534 IP addresses available. All right, now let's say we have uh, three octets of all one. So this time the subnet mask is 255.255.255.0. What's going to happen then is we only have eight zeros. We are going to raise uh, two to the power of eight, which is going to get us 256. Subtract two, 254 available IPs on that subnet mask. Okay, 
So, how do we determine what is the network IP and the broadcast IP? Because uh, these are things we really need to know when we're subnetting out a network, because these IP addresses define the boundaries of our subnet. So all of the available IP addresses of the network are going to sit between these two IP addresses. So in order to do that, we need to go back to binary. Okay, so let's take a look at the IP address of 172.16.15.25 and the subnet mask is 255.255.0.0. In binary, this is what it is going to look like, okay? So, in order to get the network address, it is going to have all zeros in the, ho the host portion of the IP address. And the broadcast IP is going to have all ones uh, on the host portion. So this is what it's going to look like when we show the binary equivalent of the IP address for the network IP and the binary version of the IP address for the broadcast IP. When we convert that back into decimal, what we get is the network IP address is 172.16.0.0. The broadcast portion is 172.16.255.255. Okay, let's look at the same IP address, but with a different subnet mask. So we're gonna look at IP address of 172.16.15.25. And the subnet mask this time will be 255.255.240.0. So we've got the binary representation of the subnet mask, the IP address and the subnet mask. We have the binary of the network IP with all zeros in the host portion. And then we have the network equivalent or the, the binary equivalent of the broadcast IP with all ones in the host portion. So now the network IP is going to be 172.16.0.0, exactly the same as it was before, okay? But this time, the broadcast IP is gonna be 172.16.15.255. Notice now that because we only have 12 zeros as opposed to 16, the amount of usable IPs is going to be two to the 12th power minus two, which is 4,094. So by adding four bits to the network portion of the, uh, the IP address, the number of usable IPs was cut from 65,534 to 4,094. Every bit added to a subnet mask effectively halves the number of usable IPs, while subtracting a bit from a subnet mask effectively doubles the number of user IPs. It's not quite exact because of the minus two part of the equation. Now, if the IP address is 172.16.17.1 with the same subnet mask of 255.255.240.0, uh, what we would then get is this binary representation for the IP address and the subnet mask. And then the uh, network or the, uh, the network IP would be equivalent here in binary with all zeros in the host portion, the broadcast IP with all ones in the host portion. And when we bring that back into dotted decimal, we have the network IP is 172.16.16.0, and the broadcast IP is 172.16.31.255. If you're thinking that this seems really complicated, let me introduce you to a shortcut to finding the number of usable IPs, all right? So when I first introduced the subnet mask, I said there were two ways we could look at it, all right? We could look at it in dot, the dotted decimal notation, say 255.255.0.0. We've also been looking at it in uh, binary notation, but we're not gonna count that for this purpose of these two versions. The other version is going to be called CIDR, C-I-D-R, which stands for Class Interdomain Routing. All right, now that you've 
gotten that, just go ahead and forget what it actually stands for. It's CIDR, C-I-D-R. The way CIDR notation looks for a subnet mask is you're going to see the IP address followed by a, sl a forward slash and then a number between, say, 8 and 30 or 32, really. Um, so what we would then be looking at is for an IP address of, say, 172.16.15.25 with a subnet mask of 255.255.0.0, the CIDR notation for that would be 172.16.15.25 slash 16. Okay, if that subnet mask was 255.255.240.0, the CIDR notation would be 172.16.15.25 slash 20. Okay, so the way the CIDR notation is represented is we are basically taking the number of ones in a subnet mask and counting up that number and uh, that becomes the CIDR notation. So when we have a CIDR of slash 16, we're saying that there are 16 ones in the subnet mask. A CIDR of slash 20, there are 20 ones in the subnet mask. So 20 bits, 16 bits, 20 bits, okay? The uh, way we can use this, of course, to find the number of zeros in the subnet mask is that a subnet mask is 32 bits long. So we can take 32 minus the CIDR notation of the subnet mask, run that equation, we get the number of zeros. Okay, so a CIDR notation of slash 16 is going to have 16 zeros. A CIDR notation of slash 20 is going to have 12 zeros. 32 minus 20 equals 12. All right. Now, let's say we have another IP address here. Let's look at 192.168.1.1, probably your home router IP, uh, slash 25. Okay, 32 minus 25, that's gonna be seven, so there's gonna be seven zeros. So using the CIDR notation to find the number of zeros, we just simply plug that into our subnet equation of uh, the number two raised to the power of the number of zeros in the subnet mask, and then subtract two, and we get our number of usable IPs. Now, there are a couple more things that I need to bring up before I introduce a tool to help you with subnetting. So first, let's talk about classful versus classless IPs, okay? If we go back to earlier in the video where I was talking about the three unicast IP classes, class A, B, and C, and I gave a number of total IPs in each class of, of the, those IPs. You know, we have class A with uh, 16,777,216. 16. We have class B at uh, 65,536 and class C with 256. Just remember, of course, to subtract two from those numbers to get the total number of usable IPs. Right. The reason I bring this up is not because that some IP addresses have absolutely no class whatsoever and uh, others are the, the classful ones are the ones you want to hang out with, but rather because there are certain subnets that align to these classes. So for class A, a subnet mask of 255.0.0.0 or a slash 8 is going to align with class A. For class B, it's 255.255.0.0 or slash 16. For class C, it is 255.255.255.0 or slash 24. All right. Anytime you see an IP address where the, uh, the subnet mask aligns to the class of the IP, uh, these are going to be the easiest ones to subnet because you already know where the bit count is and it creates sort of a natural divider of the subnets. So 8 bits, 16 bits, 24 bits. And as a result, that creates a, a sort of a, just some easy boundaries that we have for subnetting. And you also know that, say, for a class C IP address, 
uh, you're going to have a subnet mask no larger than a slash 24 or a 255.255.0. Um, actually, there is something called su super netting where you can utilize a subnet mask larger than the class of IP, but it's actually a rather rare thing and it only happens uh, if you have ownership of two or more consecutive IP blocks. Lastly, I'm going to mention private IPs. In each class of IP addresses, there are blocks of private IPs, which means they can only be routed in the local area network or LAN and cannot be routed across the internet. They are for class A, 10.0.0.0 slash 8. Class B is going to be uh, 172.16.0.0 slash 12, although this is commonly broken up into various slash 16 addresses. For class C, it's going to be 192.168.0.0 slash 16, which would then be broken up into a bunch of slash A or slash 24 IP addresses. Okay, the class A private IP is a classful IP space, but the class B and C IP addresses are oddly enough an example of supernetting. If you're watching this at home and you look up your IP, you will most likely see a 192.168 IP address. That is your home router assigning you with a private IP uh, that it use, and then it uses a protocol called NAT or Network Address Translation to convert your IP address into a public IP address for connection and transmission across the internet. As you're working with a career in computer networking, these private IP addresses are going to be the IPs that you will work with the most. You will effectively have them memorized. You will even develop muscle memory when you're typing them in. 192.168 gets rather fun when you then go to 172.16 and you just sort of instinctively hit that eight key. Uh, but as I said, th these are the IP addresses that if you're working in a career networking, you're going to be working with these IP addresses more than anything else. But there's also two other blocks of IP addresses that you need to be aware of. The first is going to be 172, or not 172, 127. See, that's that whole memory thing just kind of kicking in around 172. But so the IP address of 127.0.0.0 slash 8. This is the local IP range, okay? And your computer uses this IP address range to identify itself to itself. So when the people were developing the uh, IPv4 standard, uh, for some reason, they just decided to allocate 16 million IP addresses with, for the sole purpose of making sure your computer doesn't have an existential crisis. All right, you can even try this at home. Okay, you can uh, use your own computer and just go ahead and ping any IP address in that 127.0.0 slash 8 range, and it will work. Normally, people use 127.0.0.1, but the truth is you can use any IP address in that range, and the ping will still work. So as I said, 16 million IPs, simply so your computer doesn't have an existential crisis. The other block of IP addresses is going to be 169.254.0.0 slash 16. This is a class B block of IP addresses that your computer, typically a computer running a Microsoft operating system, is going to self-assign one of these IPs to its or to a network interface if it is unable to get an IP address from a DHCP server. So there are two ways you can get an IP address assigned to a network interface. The first is a static assignment where you go onto the network interface and you provide it with the IP address you want it to have. The other way is 
DHCP, Dynamic Host Control Protocol, I believe. I'll put the actual text down here if I got that wrong. But if your computer is unable to communicate with an, a DHCP server and you haven't statically assigned it, you're going to get, uh, typically on a Microsoft operating system, uh, an IP address in the 169.254.0.0 slash 16 block. Okay, Microsoft refers to this as automatic private IP addressing or APIPA. Uh, so if you get this IP, it means your computer is having some network issues that you, you're going to need to diagnose. Now, the best way in my experience to get good or proficient at subnetting is to practice, practice, practice. And for that, I have actually created a tool on my website, which I will link to down below. Uh, or for further reference, you can just go to www.richtechguy.com and I will have a link on the main page to a subnetting practice tool. So let's take a look at the tool and uh, I'm gonna walk you through it and uh, I encourage you, please go there and utilize it to practice subnetting. Okay, so this is the subnetting practice tool that I have created. I have written some instructions here and uh, the way this tool works is we are going to click on the start button here and it's going to display an IP address and a subnet mask. And now you need to fill in the rest of the fields based off of all of the information that I have covered so far in this video. So right now we have an IP address of 142.196.61.51. And a subnet mask is 255.255.0.0. So it's gonna be a fairly easy one. The CIDR for that is going to be 16. The network IP address is going to be fairly easy of 142.196.0.0. The broadcast IP address is going to be uh, 142.196.255.255. And the IP class for this is going to be class B. The total number of usable IP addresses with a 16-bit, 32 minus 16, is going to be 16. So 2 to the power of 16 minus 2 is our equation, which is going to give us 65,534. Now, once you've entered all this information, there's a button here that says check my answers. So you can check that, and everything uh, here checks out. We get a green check mark next to everything. It's all good. Now, let's say I had put some bad information, like I, I put in that it was a class A, and I say check my answers. So instead of the green check, you're gonna get a red X. All right. And uh, lastly, also, if you want to uh, just see the answers, maybe you're, you're trying to put it in, you're trying to calculate it, you're having trouble, uh, and so you just want it to show you the correct answers, there you go. You can. Uh, click on show correct answers and uh, uh, it will display the correct information. So once we've gone through this, if we want to do it again, all we have to do is click the start button again. It's going to clear everything out. Um, this one is also giving me a rather easy class C on a slash 24 subnet mask. Uh, I'm going to click start again. Let's see if we can get something a bit more challenging here. Okay, and actually the other feature I wanted to highlight here is this one. Okay, so on, uh, it will not always give you the subnet mask in the dotted decimal notation. Sometimes it will give you the subnet mask in CIDR notation. So let's figure this one out. Okay, so if the CIDR is 13, well, we're gonna go 255. Okay, now let's go from 16 backwards because two, if, if it was a slash 16, it would be 255, but we're going to work backwards from there. All right, so it would be 255. So 15 would be 254, 14 would be 252, and then 13 would be 248.0.0. Okay, the network IP address all right, so first of all, what we're gonna look at is 
When the octet is going by 248, that means it is going to, that particular octet on the IP address is going to jump by uh, eight on the uh, IP address subnet. So we're gonna start off, of course, with 120. And we need to figure out the nearest multiple of eight. All right, so I happen to know that 160 is a multiple of eight. So 152 is, so 160 minus eight is gonna give us 152. All right, so this is gonna actually be 152.0.0. All right, now for the broadcast IP address, we need to move up on this octet to eight, but not quite because we need all ones on the, the host portion. So this is actually gonna be 120.1. 59, so it's actually, if we left the full eight, we would be at the next network IP address. So we need to back it off one to get to the broadcast IP address of this subnet. And so then it'll be 255.255. The IP address class is going to be A, and the total number of usable IP addresses. Well, we're gonna take that CIDR notation, 32 minus 13, I got a nice little calculator here to work this out because it's gonna give us a really big number. So 32 minus 13, we have 19. So we're gonna go two to the power of 19, uh, which is going to give us 524,288. All right, let's subtract two from that. And that gives us uh, 524,286. All right. Let's check my answers, see if I got this right. Hey, I got it right. <laughs> so uh, we can do another run here. Uh, you know, I can show the correct answers again, just to, to show you that uh, how everything checked out. Uh, and we'll click start again. And uh, okay, this time we get 255.192.0.0. We already know this is gonna be a class A IP address based off of that. So the CIDR notation for this is actually going to be nine. So in this particular case, actually no, it's gonna be 10. It will be 10. Uh, in this particular case, we know that 255.0.0.0 is eight. So the, if we add one bit into the second octet of the subnet mass, that is going to give us 255.128. We add a second bit for a slash 10. Uh, and that will give us 192, okay? For the network IP address, we know at this point that we are going to be make, uh, well, we're gonna start off with 114. And then uh, the, the next one, this particular octet with a 192 in its subnet mask is going to jump by uh, 64. Okay, so we need to figure out the nearest point of 64 for this, uh, which is actually going to be 128.0.0. The broadcast IP address is gonna be 114.128. Nope, not 128, 191. We're gonna jump forward 64 to 192, but that gives us the next network address. We're gonna back off one bit and uh, 191.255.255. The total number of usable IPs, this is going to be 22. So uh, two to the power of 22. Oops, that was, I need to reset that on the calculator. Two to the power of 22. This is gonna give us 4,194,000. Uh, 304, but we're gonna subtract two from that. So 302 check my answers. There we go. That's all correct. Show correct answers. There you go. Uh, of course, the class A's, you're going to be working with a lot of big numbers. Okay, we do this again. All right, now we're going to get a class C IP address. And uh, we have an, a subnet mask of 255.255.255.224. Okay, so the CIDR for this, if we start off at 255.255.255.0, uh, .255 that would be a slash 24. So 128 would bring us to, one, to a slash 25, 
slash 26 would be 192, so this is going to be a slash 27 with 224. The network IP address is 195.52.1. Forty-seven, and then this particular octet is going to jump by multiples of 32. Okay, so that's actually going to give us the final octet. We know 192 is one of those uh, multiple of 32 boundaries. Uh, you, you start to, to associate that the, these numbers of subnet mass, uh, 128, uh, you know, 192, uh, 224, these start to follow in your mind as natural points where you, you might be able to find a, uh, uh, a network IP address. So 192 is one of them. This is currently at 189. So we're going to back off from that to uh, 160 because we're going back 32 uh, bits on the... Uh, or we're going to go back by about 32 here on the uh, uh, network address. The broadcast address is going to be 195.52.147.191. This is going to be a class C IP address. And just so you know, you can put that in in lowercase or uppercase. It's, it's going to accept it either way. And the total new number of usable IP addresses. Well, we know this last octet is jumping by groups of 32. So, you know, it's this one's actually easy. It's going to be 32 minus 2. So that's going to be 30. Check my answers. There we go. We got it. So, again, this is just a tool that you can use to practice subnetting. Uh, practice, practice, practice. I encourage you to utilize that tool. All right, so that is everything to know about IPv4 subnetting uh, in one video. All right, congratulations, you've made it to the end of this video. So if you haven't done so already, go ahead and hit that like button down below. And uh, you're at the end of this video, you're obviously interested in this content, go ahead and hit that subscribe button as well, just so that you can uh, go ahead and get more content uh, from this channel. Okay, so. As you're continuing to grow your career and, and learn, I'm going to go ahead and put some resources and links down below to help you out uh, with IP subnetting and with the basics of computer networking. So go ahead and check those links out. They are going to be affiliate links, but uh, that's just for your information. Do with that as you will. Uh, and as always, keep learning, keep improving, keep studying, and I will see you in the next video.